It's good to hear the truth of God. To understand God's heart. Why we hear God's word. Why we read God's word. That is to understand God's heart. Because Satan is so rampantly working. Even when Israelite, Israelites left Egypt, he tried his best. This was the uh, other day Brother Victor was here. We were asking him. He was saying, what could be the danger in a church, in our church? He was saying, see, the, we need to know Satan's schemes. That is, when Satan could not stop Israelites Uh, in Egypt, he tried his best through Pharaoh, but once it was kind of, it was not possible for him to stop. He sent so many mixed multitude. That is what Satan's scheme is. And he wants to mix things up. Like we heard today, okay, oh, it's okay, no problem. false compassion love without wisdom all these things see the about uh, 49 years back brother zack was mentioning when brother zack and brother ian were filled with the holy spirit and they w- could not proclaim the whole counsel of god the truths of god then they couldn't stay there in fact the other church made sure that they went away but what was that it was the holy spirit who drew them and meet together and establish fellowship seek after god in humility what was that went with them from there that is the presence of the holy spirit presence of the lord went with them so in 1975 the we are coming to august month next month it will be 49 years i think it was in august 17th first time they met together to pray brazak many times he says we just came together we didn't know what to do we didn't want to start a new church or anything like that we came together to pray but what was significant what was significant in acts 1 when jesus said don't go away anywhere when disciples were in despair they didn't know what to do jesus said something stay in jerusalem until you receive the holy spirit the promise and he will come that means god's presence will will come with you and on that day at the day of pentecost 120 people were oh, what do, what do we say melted together through the holy spirit they were all different different uh, came from different background they had different temperaments different way they were they lived their life but the who uh, uh, brought them together and uh, united them that is the holy spirit that that's the mark brothers and sisters see what's the title which brother zack was sharing marks of a truly christian church it's a very important as we as i said see mixed we 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 should be careful that i will i should not become mix uh, or uh, not united with the holy spirit that kind of a person in the church i have to make sure that god's presence is with me i am in line with the holy spirit and holy spirit is with me you know to come to church it's not a meeting it's not mainly not meeting and singing it is i having a desire through the week to have the lord with me and being cleansed myself and having presence of the lord and then i come and such brothers and sisters humble brothers and sisters who come and they bring the presence of the lord presence of the holy spirit that's how god's presence is manifested
Great Brother Charles was saying, it is not the building. The building, when all, the, all of us go, no church here. There is nothing called church. Church is you and me. We are the church. When we come in, the Holy Spirit will come in. See, that is something, the first mark uh, which Brother Zach was mentioning. What was lost in the church in Ephesus? The first law. That means the love for the Lord was lost. The love for the Lord was not the first priority. Then what, what is the loss? The loss was the God's presence was gone. So what's the mark of a true church? True church is that uh, every person who desires, Lord, my first love is for you, and I want your presence. Can take, uh, God can take a second love uh, as second priority and stay? No, he cannot. So the first love should be his. That is the first mark. Uh, the desire should be, Lord, I want your presence. God, uh, if I say, Lord, I want your presence, I must be willing to say, Lord, my first love is for you. First priority. Why we, when we come together, we, we are encouraged to keep away from all distraction, give him the rightful place. That should be our pattern of life, not only on Sunday, all the days of our life, all the moments of our life, Lord, I want you. I don't want to be distracted by anything else. Lord, there are so many things will, are pulling me to come down from that first love. There are so many things. But Lord, no, I, I need you. I need your presence with me. Otherwise, I am nothing. I am zero. So that's, that is the mark of a true church. Who are there? Uh, who are the true church here? Those who have that desire that, Lord, I want your presence at any cost. Lord, I want to love you. I want to live for you. I want your presence with me. Then when such people gather together, that is true church. That's what, uh, see, like, uh, the, I, I remember maybe about 25 years back uh, in Dacosta Square, I was young, I was not married yet. I remember listening to Brother Zach. Uh, he was saying, I, I, that's not gone from my mind. He was saying, God's presence is very important in the church. And he was saying, he was showing, uh, uh, pointing to some CSI church in, um, um, what is it, Coxtown. He said, uh, God's presence is here, Holy Spirit is here. That is the reason I am here. If the Lord's presence moves from here and it starts moving in some church here close by, I will not be sitting here or I will not be preaching here. I will go there and maybe sit at the back of the church because God's presence is there. I am not loyal to some group or anything like that. I am loyal to the Lord. Lord's presence, where the Lord's presence moves, I go there. I still remember that. It was about 25 years back. And also once Brother Ian was preaching, at also many years back, he asked a question, uh, brothers and sisters, will you be able to recognize if the Holy Spirit has moved away from here? That's a very challenging question. I have not forgotten. Will I be able to sense if the Holy Spirit's presence is not here or, or is not with me? That's very important. That's why we have to cultivate that relationship with the Lord. Lord, I, I want you. I, I, I don't want to be blind. Suddenly your presence goes. See, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. <clears throat> I think the other day. Brother Danish was also reading this verse. If all prophesy and an unbeliever, verse 24, or an ungifted man enters, he is convicted by all, he is called to account by all. The secret, secrets of his heart are disclosed. And so he will fall on his face and worship God, declaring that God is certainly among you. See, that is what the church is. The true church of God, when God's presence is there, that is, uh, that is very important. And that's when people are convicted. God's presence, keeping God's presence in our midst is the goal of each believer, each child of God. So uh, we read also in Revelation 3 that uh, Jesus saying, I'm knocking at the door. 
That means he was outside of the church, but all the meeting, everything was happening. They didn't realize that Jesus was not there. The Holy Spirit was not there. They didn't realize that that can happen. I was referring to what Brother Ian asked the question. Do you, will you be able to recognize when the Holy Spirit is not here? Or you are happy with the songs and singing and message and many other things and you don't even sense that Holy Spirit is not here. But that's the tragedy. That's what Satan is trying to do. Somehow he will defile people and God cannot be there. Defile people and God's presence is removed. When God's presence is removed, then it's all dry. Uh, it's meeting. It's not the church. It's not the true church as Brother Zach was mentioning. And uh, point number two, I was thinking, the true church of Jesus Christ proclaims the whole counsel of God. That is something which I have been blessed over the years. Now, what is the first thing? First thing is the first love for the Lord. And the second, the whole counsel of God proclaiming. The, the thing is, what Brother Zach was mentioning, absolutely uncompromising church. When it comes to truth of God, uh, Lord, I stand by the truth. I don't want to compromise on anything. It all comes, goes little by little. Like the uh, other day, um, I think I was mentioning, there, there was a, uh, a cat who goes close to the kennel, where the dog's kennel, and uh, it keeps uh, at a distance. The master had put a line, and it goes close, and uh, it sees the line, and it stands there, and uh, comes back. But one day, dog did a trick, he removed the line and put the line closer. And it went there and got, got caught. See, that's how it is. Like uh, in ourselves also, the co un com um, compromising spirit. See, we should be uncompromising. The compromising spirit can come little by little, little by little. It trickles down and makes us uh, compromised with anything. That's why the, the, in the church, the, what is the true mark of, uh, tr uh, mark of a true church? It proclaims, keep proclaiming about sin. Uh, it attacks sin. And uh, the people are brought to repentance. And no compromise there. Uh, see, that, that is what uh, we have seen over the years. The Lord has given us leaders who spoke the truth uncompromisingly. The third thing I was seeing, the, there is no division among people. I'm so blessed. Even in Bangalore, I've been so blessed. The Lord has brought, it's, uh, see, it's not people's work. Like uh, we didn't go and choose or elders didn't go and choose and bring people. The spirit always is, brother, you, you want to be a part of the family, be here, or you find some other church. If you want to go, like Jesus said, if you want to go, you can go. But the thing is, who's bringing people into the church. When I look at brothers and sisters, the precious brothers and sisters, wonderful uh, examples in humility, in honesty, and uh, living for the Lord, love for the Lord. When I see that, I say, Lord, you're so blessed. Uh, I'm so blessed that you brought such brothers and sisters in our midst. Value brothers and sisters, each other. We need to value because it's the Lord, the Holy Spirit, on that day, uh, 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 the day of Pentecost, how the Lord brought those 120 people, later 3,000 people. Who did that? That is the Holy Spirit did it. Even today in our midst, the, who's doing the work? The Holy Spirit is working in our midst. And those who are not responding and not uh, in tune with the Holy Spirit may find difficult and go away. Whatever it is, like if, if they have to go somewhere, they are relocated, okay, the Lord will go with them. But uh, if somebody cannot withstand the working of the Holy Spirit, they may not stand. Bible says that sinners uh, cannot stand in the presence of the Lord. That is what, uh, 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 that is what the work of the Lord is. That is, a, the division is not based on uh, this community, this language, this culture, status, nothing like that. It is all, who loves the Lord? I want to love the Lord. That's the main reason I also come to the church. I come to the church because I find brothers and sisters who love the Lord. For them, that is foremost. That is the reason I come here. I don't come as, a, oh, I have responsibility, oh, uh, a Sunday meeting. No, not those things. Why I enjoy fellowship? I enjoy fellowship. I like to be here all the Sundays. I think 6, 7 o'clock until 5, 6, 7. I'll be here. I'll be talking to people. That is because such 
the Holy Spirit is bringing such people here. That is something very important. Like we read that, uh, that uh, uh, I think uh, Colossians 3 verse 11, a renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek, Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Zithian. There's nothing. No. He loves the Lord. He, then we, we are rid of all these uh, barriers of uh, uh, culture, language. No, those things. See, the, what, what, what are we connected to? Connected to the spirit of the person. He loves the Lord in his spirit. That is more important. That is most important. In fact, that should uh, drive us to have fellowship. Nothing else, not the language, intellectual status, standards, not all those things. I'm so blessed. See, this is the true mark, one of the mark of a true church. And one more uh, I was so blessed with was that the uh, desire to serve the poor. I was, I was so blessed, like uh, the, how God uh, given that spirit to Brother Zach and uh, how even to Brother E and many elders, I have fellowship, fellowshiped with many elders, all have that desire, desire to serve the poor. See, those who are hungry, they want to go and feed. And uh, uh, there is no, in the be best way to recognize is that they, we don't even know whether somebody is rich. See, in the church, it's difficult to recognize who's rich, who's poor. So th that, that is something which is very important. I remember once Brother Zach said, one of the elder, godly elder in Tamil Nadu, Brother Zach visited his house. Uh, he was a brother who was selling wadas, uh, going around selling wadas on a cycle. He was an elder. And in his church, there were some PhDs sitting and uh, under his leadership submitting to him. And when Brother Zach visited his house, and Brazak saw the house, it was just 10 by 10 room. Everything was there only. And uh, Brazak, while leaving, he said, I would like to give something to you. You know what that brother said? He said, uh, no, I'm not needy. I'm, God has provided everything. I'm not poor. Then Brazak said, uh, maybe you can give it to somebody in the church. And his reply was, no, no, we don't have any poor people in our church. See, that's the spirit of contentment. That, ha that was, the Lord has worked that spirit of contentment. Maybe I should read that verse, which, the, which happened in uh, Paul's life also. That verse, very encouraging verse. Chapter 4, Philippians uh, verse 12. So, yeah, verse 11. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I am, I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. See, that's the thing. See, nobody is poor. No child of God will be poor, because that contentment, is, that content spirit will come in. And uh, that is what the Razak and many elders have worked through. It is not money makes a person rich. It's God's presence, that spirit of contentment, uh, no spirit of grumbling, complaining, and greediness. That, that is gone. And uh, th that is what makes uh, a person rich, the, because he is connected to Christ. And we need to look for such people and work among the humble and the poor. The not uh, uh, mo Most of the churches, I don't know, I have not gone to many churches. Wherever I was in a Catholic church, the importance was given to the rich people. That is something... Uh, the, that's the mark of the true church. And uh, the fifth one, last one, the true church, that is, which treats weaker members as important. See, that is what I have seen over the years. I've been in this church for more than uh, about 28 years. I have seen the weaker, wholehearted brothers are treated and valued. Valued. Every member, Especially weaker, even though they are weaker, they are so important. There are many members in the body we don't see, but they are more, most important members in the body. May the Lord help us to recognize this so that we will not deviate from the, 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 what we need to seek for, the important things which we need to seek for, look for in the church, and we pursue these things and so that uh, we will recognize which is the, the true church, Christian church. May the Lord help us. I was um, thinking about the Laodicean church where they were satisfied 
They said, we are rich, we have no need. But the Lord was ready to spit them out of his mouth. I was also thinking about, I was thinking about, see, it's a matter of degree. The big danger we all have is we compare ourselves with others. And, you know, the Bible says anyone who does that is a fool. But to set our eyes on what the Lord has for us and examine myself in the light of that. Yeah, I was, because purity, you know, any, anyone can say something is pure, but it depends on how pure it is, right? And the standard is the Lord's standard, the biblical standard, you know, his love for us. Uh, I was thinking about the Mount of Transfiguration, right? This is in Mark 9. We can look at it, Mark 9. Peter said, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. In uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 5, we'd be inclined to agree with him. There were only three disciples there. The rest of them were at the bottom of the hill. So they were in a special group. They said, it's good for us to be here. I think all of us can say it's good for us to be here. No? It's good, no? Such a good church. So many things. Good building, ground, parking. <laughs> better, better and better music <laughs> nowadays. Yeah. And he said, let's make a tabernacle, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Next verse says, he did not, know, did not know what he was saying. Because a cloud came upon them. And a voice came out of, out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, listen to him. What, what, went, what went wrong? He was no longer taken up with Jesus alone. And then a cloud came. And that same cloud will come again and again upon any of us when we get into this attitude of saying, oh, this is a good place for us to be. Let's make ourselves comfortable here. And they put, you know, Jesus, he put Jesus first, but Moses, Elijah also in that same, you know, category. And the cloud came. And they were terrified, it says, but the next verse gives us hope. It says, all at once they looked around and they saw no one with them anymore except Jesus alone. That was a deliverance that they had. You know, the cloud was lifted and they saw Jesus alone. That's the heart that I want to keep having as the Lord speaks to me in this church. Turn away from everything else. Fix my heart and my devotion on Jesus alone. I was thinking about the Song of Solomon. And uh, Brother Zach was, was talking about Sister Annie and, you know, how he decided, chose that Sister Annie, you know, to be the one that he would. And I was thinking about the heart of a bride. <laughs> Just two verses, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3. Your oils have a, have a f pleasing fragrance. Your name is like purified oil. And uh, in the margin it says, oil that is poured from vessel to vessel. The name of Jesus is like oil that is poured from vessel to vessel. See, the name of Jesus is used everywhere. There are many people who call themselves Christian. There are many who use the name of Jesus as a curse word. You know, along with other bad things that they are saying, Jesus' name comes out. And then there are those who, for whom the name of Jesus is precious. And the name of Jesus is like oil, purified oil that is poured from vessel to vessel. And, you know, I'm a sinner, I'm in great need of a savior. And I'm longing for that love of God, the Holy Spirit, oil is a picture of the Holy Spirit, to flow 
in and through me. And that is my great, great longing, and I come with that because his name is Jesus, the one who saves, and I am the most needy one. And I come for that. And I long that this purified oil should, you know, flow through me and flow to others as well. As it says about Mary, you know, she, she poured out the anointing oil on the body of Jesus. I, I need the body of Jesus. I need this anointing oil. This name is precious to me. Yeah, and it says, verse, verse 7. Why should I be like one who veils herself besides the flock of your companions? Tell me, O oh you whom my soul loves, where do you pasture your flock? Where do you make it lie down at noon? For why should I be like one who veils herself besides the flock of your companions? So she says, she's talking to the Lord and she says, tell me, you're the one who I really love. Where do you pasture your flock? How can I hang around with you? Where are you pasturing your flock? I, I want to be there. Why is it good for us to be here? It's good for us to be here if we feel that this is where the Lord is pasturing his flock. And I want to be there with him, doing that. That's, that's what thrills my heart. And it says, why should I be like one who veils herself besides the flock of your companions? See, this is how I think of it. We can think of godly men as companions of God. And, you know, you can say John Wesley's church or Martin Luther's church. You can say Brother Zach's church. May it never be. I don't want to join the flocks of Jesus' companions. I want to be where Jesus is pasturing his flock. And this veiling herself, you know, you have to wear a mask. And there's also, we can see that in other places in the Bible, you know, the, these prostitutes would sit with a veil. There's a heart of adultery there. There's a lack of pure devotion. Something has come. I can't be myself, because some cloud has come over pure devotion for the Lord. Oh, why should I be like that? Why should I veil myself besides the flock of your companions? I want to be where you are pasturing your flock. I want to be where you are. I want to be taken up with you. And uh, I, I really believe the Lord will continually do this, refresh us and lift this cloud draws to him. I want to read in closing the a verse from a song. It's a song called The Sands of Time. Brother Zach has read this. Talks about the attitude of the bride. <clears throat> it says the bride eyes not her garments. Sure, I'm sure the bride thinks about her garments. You know, she wants to look nice, but there's a big reason for that. The reason is I really want to look beautiful to my bridegroom. But when she's in the presence of the Lord, she doesn't eye her garments. She's looking at her dear bridegroom's face. I will not gaze at glory, but on my King of grace. There's no other thing that really draws my heart or attracts me, but the Lord himself. Not at the crown he giveth, not but on his pierced hand. It's not what I get or what I do, but his hands that were pierced for me, that is the object of my attention and the source of my devotion. The Lamb is all the glory in Emmanuel's land. Brothers and sisters, let's examine ourselves and think about why it's good for us to be here. Think of all the blessings of the Lord and the direction he's calling us towards him. Let's bow our heads and pray.